Welcome to the fourth video on JAWS.js. Now starting from this video and moving forward, we're going to increase the complexity. Combine all the things I've gone over in the first three videos and add in, in this video, sprite sheets, animations, and more game states. Now towards that end, I've included instructions now. We're going to use the arrow keys to guide the squid. I've also increased the canvas size to 600 by 600. And we're using a style sheet just to put everything in the center, to align it all centered. Moving on to the game.js file, we see two new game states, menu state and end state, that work nearly identically but have different sprites. In the case of menu state, we're using menu, happy squid, we'll press enter. Then the end state, we're using end, game over. For both of them, during the update function, if enter is pressed, we call switch game state, part of JAWS, to switch to play state, where the play will actually happen. So when we first start the game, we're presented with menu state. We'll press enter, we'll go to play state. When we're in play state, and we run out of health, we're going to end state. But if we press enter again, we'll come back to play state. Moving down to play state, we see a few new variables again. HUD, heart, heart sheet, and coral. HUD is going to represent our heads up display. It's going to keep track of things like player health, and in a later video, the amount of coins we've collected. Heart is going to represent the visual information of how much health the player has in a heart shape. Heart sheet represents the sprite sheet for the heart, as I'll go over in just a moment. Now, a sprite sheet is a sheet of sprites. We set it to an image, we tell it a frame size, and then its orientation, either right or down. If it's right, it's left to right. If it's down, it's top to bottom. In this case, it's right. Heart sheet looks like this. Three frames, zero, one, and two. Sprite sheet, once you've created it, uses the information from frame size to split the image into frames, which can then be accessed through the frames property of a sprite sheet object. So for heart, we're setting its initial image to be the zero index of frames of heart sheet. This right here, the filled in heart. Moving down to viewport, we see we've changed it a little bit. It now has a max X and a width that are the same number, 500. Now remember the canvas element is 600 by 600. So now the viewport is not filling the entirety of it, it's stopping at 500. Which is where the HUD comes in. The HUD starts at 510, runs 90 pixels in width, and ends at 600, the same as its height. So the viewport is going to extend from 0 to 500, and the HUD We'll start at 510 and run to 600. So it'll be a 10 pixel buffer between where the viewport is to where the HUD begins. Moving down to player, we see we're not setting an initial image because we're going to be using an animation. Instead, we just set its coordinates, an X and a Y, its initial properties, DX, DY, and speed from the last video. We're also using player.health. Player.health is going to represent the index to heart sheet, which the heart sprite will use to set its image. Heart sheet, as I showed, runs 0, 1, 2, from full health to half health to no health. So player health will actually start at 0, this index, and run 0, 1, 2. And if it's greater than 2, we run out of health. Which I'll get to in just a moment. Player.move, I'm using the this keyword 
because the move function property refers to other properties of player xy, dx, and dy. So we can use this keyword to refer to player this.x and this.dx. Since they're also properties of player, we can just refer to using this, since move is also a property of player. So that's what we're doing right here in these two conditions. We're checking to see that player.y is not less than 32, and player.y is not greater than 1700, stopping it at the top and stopping it at the var bottom of the viewport. At the end of this function, I'm chaining together two assignment statements. If assignment statements are setting the same value, this.dx equals zero, this.dy equals zero, we can chain them together, and the red right to left. So the value of zero is being assigned to this.dy, and then its value is being assigned to this.dx. Now we're going to introduce animations. An animation is a separate object within JAWS. And it's set using a sprite sheet, its image, a frame size, a frame duration, and an orientation. It looks very similar to the sprite sheet when we set an image, frame size, and an orientation. But an animation has a frame duration. That is the total time a frame will appear on screen in milliseconds. And we can cut up that total animation using slice. So for squid animation, it has a total of six frames from zero to five. So we're slicing the animation from zero to two, zero, one, two, and assign it to the animation up property of player. And then from slices three to five, three, four, and five, we're assigning it to be the default animation property of player. Moving down to Coral, we see that's a new variable being introduced in this video. Coral, for each iteration of this for loop from 1 to 100, is creating new sprites in positions 0 along the left-hand side, and then 500 along the right-hand side. In the case of the second sprite of each loop, it's being flipped. The default position of the Coral points to the right. So flipped, it points to the left. So each iteration of the for loop is creating a sprite on the left-hand side, facing in, and then on the right-hand side, facing in, the right-hand side being flipped. And that's what we're using in this coral animation, creating a new animation object, setting its sprite sheet, its frame size, its frame duration, in its orientation, in this case, top to bottom or down. And it looks like that, 0, 1, 2, which is exactly what we're setting right here, a slice of the animation from 0 to 2, 0, 1, and 2, will be the default animation property of the coral object, which is what we're using in this next property, creating the property animate, which is a function, as part of coral, and then calling this coral for each element, set its image to be the next in the loop of the default animation property of the coral object. This allows us to, with one function, tell every sprite within coral to animate all at once where each individual for each element will be set to the next in the loop. So they can all animate and we can call it with one function. Coral.check is very similar to coins.check, where it checks to see if player is colliding with coral, collide one with many, 
If it is, we increase health by 1, plus, plus. If it's greater than 2, we've exceeded our health, and now it's game over. So we switch states to the end state. If it's not, then we go ahead and set the index, represented by player.health, of the frames property of the heart sheet to heart. So in order, starting with 0, then 1, and then 2, represented by player health as the index of the frames for heart sheet that heart will set its image to. Once that's taken care of, we need to know where the collision occurred. If player.x was less than 250, meaning it collided on the left-hand side, since 250 is half of 500, then we'll move it 42 pixels to the right. We'll add 42 pixels to it. Collision occurred on the right-hand side. We'll subtract 42 pixels and move it to the left. So every time a collision occurs, the player sprite is moved inward, away from the coral, so that it doesn't collide on the next game tick again, and we don't automatically game over as the collisions occurred one after another without us having a chance to move the player away from the core. The property of the coins look the same as it does in the last video. We're setting nine coins, and we're checking to see if it collides with player. Collide one with many, and if it does, we're removing the first results from coins each time. C properties is being set to a width of 500 and then a height of max height, so it fills the entirety of the viewport. We're also overwriting the default keys. Since we didn't have anything else on the page other than the canvas in the previous videos, this wasn't as important. But now that we're introducing more things to index.html, we want to make sure that JAWS is preventing the default actions for these keys. We want to prevent the default keys. Reason for doing this is that if the canvas element does not have the focus for not playing the game, the default actions for the arrows is to move the page itself and not a sprite within the canvas. So we want to make sure while the page is open, JAWS has the focus. It's preventing the default and all input of these listed keys will go to JAWS and not anything else. Down in Update, we see the very first step done is for player to set its image to the next in the default animation property of player. So its default animation is running as the very first step. Then Coral is told to animate. So for each element within Coral, it's setting the next image in its animation loop to be the next in line. Then we're checking again up, left, down, and right. If it's up or down, we're using the animation up property of player and setting the next in its loop. So up and down have a separate animation than left or right or not doing anything at all. Then again, we're adding a bit of gravity. We're moving the player. We're checking if it collides with coins. We're checking to see if a player collides with coral. And then we're centering the viewport around the player. Then within the draw functionality of PlayState, I've changed things a little bit. Now instead of calling viewport that draw over and over and over again, we can use viewport.apply and then a list of the sprites or sprite list we want drawn and the viewport will be applied to them. So if they're being drawn within the viewport, they'll be shown. And if not, they won't be shown. And it allows us to set up the same order again. The C drawn first, the coral drawn on the C, the player drawn on the C, and the coins drawn on the C. And then the viewport applied to all of them. And the last two things we're doing is drawing the HUD and drawing the heart. And the heart needs to go on the HUD, so the HUD is drawn first, and then the heart. Then again, as I mentioned in the last video, we're adding all of the assets at once. 
the coin, the squid animation, the coral animation, the heart sheet, the menu, and the end. All at one time, so all the images are loaded during the initial loading phase before anything else is done. And so they're ready to be called. We won't have to wait for those images to be loaded once we start using them. Then we're calling jaws.start on menu state. So the first thing we're going to see is menu state. And then when we press enter, play state. Then we will run out of health, end state. So let me show you what that looks like. Happy squid. And this is the menu state. We see press enter. We press enter, we see the squid. And a default animation, little tentacles going up and down. As gravity is applied and it floats slowly down the view. We also see the HUD on the right hand side and the 10 pixels between the viewport and the HUD and the heart is on top of the HUD. We also see the coral along the left hand side and then flip along the right hand side. And we also see it animating. It's blinking. We also see now the sprite has gone down to 1700 along the Y axis and it's not going any farther down. And if I press up, we see a different animation. We see the up animation. If I press down, we'll see the same thing. We press up, collide with the coins as they get removed. And we see we can't exceed 32, which is right where the C starts. And now if we collide with coral, we see the health has gone down. If we collide with coral over there, we see the health has gone down again. And if we collide with coral a third time, well, it's game over. But if we press enter, we can play again. And everything gets reset. And we can float along in the sea, or collide, collide, and collide for game over one more time. Well, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll go over the final two objects of JAWS.js, tile map, and parallax scrolling. So we can check to see if the squid is in a certain place on the tile map. And we can have some background images scrolling along with the viewport to add some visual depth to the sea we already have. Thanks for watching.